we're going to talk about cost behavior. You've already been introduced to the different types of costs and how they can be classified. We've done things like direct and indirect, manufacturing, non-manufacturing, fixed and variable. Costs can also be mixed, meaning that they're a combination of fixed and variable costs together. I've also talked about management accounting. And the focus of management accounting is to predict the future in order to aid a company in attaining their goals. In order to aid in a management accountant's ability to predict the future, we can create cost functions. Cost functions are a numerical formula which represents how costs will change with changes in the level of activity. We know that once we have a cost function, we can plot the activity on a chart so that we can better determine how costs will react to changes in the level of activity, within the relevant range of course. Note that when we use cost functions, we have to assume a number of things about costs. One, the cost driver explains the variation in the total cost. Now, that's a big assumption. We know that when we pool costs, one cost driver may not represent all the costs within the cost pool. The cost driver should be chosen so that it represents the majority of the costs within the cost pool, but we know that it's unlikely to represent 100% of the costs in the cost pool. When we create cost functions, we assume that the cost driver chosen represents all the costs in the cost pool and that that one driver causes all the changes to total cost. Two, we assume there's a linear relationship between the cost driver and the total cost within the relevant range. This means that we assume that the relationship between the total costs and the cost driver is linear. That might not be true, but for us to use cost functions to predict the future, we simplify the relationship by assuming that it is true. Cost functions for mixed costs are made up of both variable and fixed portions and they look like this, something you've already seen before. Total cost is equal to variable cost times the quantity plus the fixed cost. Note that the mixed cost is made up of both fixed and variable costs. Sometimes it's easy to identify the variable and fixed components of a mixed cost, but a lot of the time, the only information available is the total mixed cost and the cost driver. It's the accountant who has to separate the fixed and variable costs into their individual components so that it can be used to predict total costs at different levels of activity. First, we have to be able to recognize when costs are mixed. Let's check out an example. First, we have to decide what is the dependent variable. The dependent variable is what we want to predict at different levels of activity. It's the thing that changes with the level of activity. Second, we have to decide on the independent variable. The independent variable is the cost driver, the activity that causes costs to happen. In this case, we're looking at the cost of transferring materials to different parts of the factory. Therefore, the number of transfers is the independent variable because as the number of transfers increases, the cost of handling the material increases. Therefore, the number of transfers is the independent variable. It is the thing that causes cost to happen. The total handling cost is the dependent variable. It changes with the level of activity. Is this a mixed cost? It's really easy to determine that. What we do is we divide the total cost, the dependent variable, by the cost driver, the independent variable. If the cost per one unit of cost driver is the same in all cases, then the cost is a pure variable cost with no fixed component. So if we take 4,000 and we divide it by 200, we can see that the answer is, $20. That means that handling costs per transfer in January cost us $20. If I now take February and do the same division, what do we get? $20. In fact, we get $20 all the way down if we do the division. 
This indicates that this is a purely variable cost. This is not a mixed cost. How do we know that? Because when we divide the dependent variable, total handling costs, by the independent variable, number of transfers, the outcome is the same every single time. What if we saw something different? Is this a mixed cost? To determine that, simply divide the dependent variable, total handling costs, by the independent variable, what drives the total cost, which is the number of transfers. If it results in the same outcome each time, then it's purely variable. But if the outcome differs every single month, then we know it's a mixed cost, which we have to separate into the fixed and variable components. Let's do the division. 8,140 divided by 200 is $40.70. If I take 10,304 and divide it by 309, it's $33 and 34 cents, uh, 35 cents if I round it. Keep doing the division for each one. $34 and 35 cents, $41 and 40 cents, $23 and 16 cents, $26, 15 cents, $31.42, $29.25, and $28.50. This is a mixed cost made up of both fixed and a variable component. What methods can be used to separate the fixed and variable costs into their individual components? There are three different methods. First is the high-low method. Second, scatter graph method. And third, regression analysis, also called the method of least squares. Note that every single method assumes that there is a linear relationship between the total cost, the dependent variable, and the cost driver, the independent variable. Remember that linear function is represented by the following. Total cost is equal to variable cost times quantity plus the fixed cost. It's important to remember that this assumption is a critical assumption with regards to using this function to predict costs at different levels of activities. Let's start with separating the costs using the high-low method, which is exactly what we'll do in the next video.